welcome to another interesting episode of Youth Hub. I am Hosanna Okora. How are you doing? It's been a while and we've changed, um, we've moved dates from having to see us twice a week to just on Thursdays by 3 p.m. So make sure you do not miss any of that. So today we have um, a very important discussion, like I always bring you important discussions interesting ones that will blow your mind and you know engage you so today we'll be talking about promoting gender equality and inclusivity among youth and um you know in um in uh, a generation where the world is constantly evolving you know among the youth it's essential that the next generation is equipped to embrace diversity challenge biases and you know champion equal opportunities for all both for male and female so today i want you to join us as we explore how young people are leading the change and you know taking the charge for a more inclusive society breaking down barriers and rewiring the rules to ensure everyone has a voice and a seat at the table um <clears throat> we don't want it to be that this this is just dominantly for men okay it's only men that do this uh, let's not uh, women can't do it i think that's really in the past so these days in this contemporary times we want to see how we can include both the male and the female to do things that you know can wow us so together we will be you know seeing how we can talk about this together we can build a future where equality isn't just a goal but a reality so it's um, somehow people think politics is just for men these days I'm beginning to see more of women in the political arena doing beautiful things and to join me on this very essential discussion today I have someone very special to me and to think we have some things entangled around <laughs> How we met. At first, I met her. Um, first time I saw her profile was on LinkedIn. See, take your LinkedIn very serious. Don't play with it. Mm -hmm. I went to her profile. I was like, wow, this is these are the kind of people I want to, you know, have as friends, as mentors, collaboration. You know, do a lot of things with them. And she's a lawyer. Yes, I know you saw my friends are lawyers. Okay, no <laughs> problems. <laughs> so this one is a lawyer with a difference. So you should come and tell us. That is something that is before the lawyer, how it works and all of that. So meet Esquire, Mina Obeten. How are you doing? Welcome to the I'm program. I'm fine, thank you. And thank you for having me. I'm so excited to oh, be here. I like even my guests <laughs> excited. <laughs> yeah, and how are you? I'm very well. You look good. I love your dress, your shoes. I think I should raid your wardrobe because thank I'm going through you. your Instagram. I'm like, okay, I'm going to wait her wardrobe. Next is Mina's house. Oh, thank you. So, welcome to Youth Hub. Thank you so much. So, here on Youth Hub, we have different programs. Um, we have youth share their challenges, their voices. And on today's episode, we'll be talking about, you know, gender equality and inclusivity. So, tell me, as a female lawyer and, you know, a business owner and a tech professional, I know you have some things to do around tech. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. So, what challenges have you personally faced in terms of gender inequality and how did you overcome them? Wow, thank you for having me, first of all. And I must say I'm always excited to talk about, you know, um, topics that are in the line of gender equality and inclusion, you know, gender diversity yes. and inclusion yes. as well. And um, you asked what challenges they faced. I think one of the most common, you know, or one of the most recurrent is the issue of... Um, people thinking it's odd for a woman to be in a tech, exactly. you know, in the tech space that is male that dominated. That is why we're here. That's right? what we're talking about. And I usually say, I usually say this when I'm speaking most of the time, that every time I tell people, you know, I own e lawyer, they're shocked, especially they're people like, who know this? the brand. Yeah. Most people know the brand and don't know the face you. behind the brand. So sometimes they feel it's a guy. And when they hear right. it's a lady, they're like, okay. okay. <laughs> you know, you know that reaction. Okay. So I've gotten that reaction a couple of times. And I mean, I wouldn't blame them because we live in a society where we have gender roles. You know, the guys are expected to be in a particular, a particular kind, of, kind of, of, you know, yeah, career, career or role. Or and then the women as well are expected mm -hmm. to be in a particular and role, maybe in the kitchen. you know, <laughs> in the inner room or in the kitchen. You know, so I have actually faced um, 
a bit of that challenge of people always assuming, you know, it's strange for a woman to be in that role. I think I'm used to it now. You know, I think that's the major one. And how have I been able to um, sort of overcome this? Um, I think I just believe in myself enough to not really care what people say. Think. And I'm focused on, you know, certain goals in life. And one of that is to become the richest man in Africa and to build a tech hub, right? And I'm working towards that. And every time I think of the fact that, okay, this is what I'm working towards, I don't let, you know, patriarchy, I'll call that patriarchy, patriarchy yeah, you know, ideology or narrative deter me from doing what I'm supposed to do. You know, so I just keep pushing. I keep doing my thing. I keep showing up regardless of what people say. And then people have an issue with ambitious women. Yeah, they really do. People really do. They yeah. just begin to paint some sort of um, feeling, some sort of, I don't know what it is, around women, some sort of aura. Okay, she, she why, why does she want to do that? She wants to start doing like a man. And then they start painting you to be masculine yeah. in some sort of way. When you're just being assertive, yeah. not necessarily being masculine, they look at you like a competition, mm -hmm. which shouldn't be. I feel like the men should loosen up and embrace women in most of all of this. I wouldn't want all that. Yeah. It doesn't sit well with me. You know, we I live in like a very misogynistic society where people feel it's a man's world. You know, men are allowed to do a lot of things, but a woman and should go not. go away with it. Exactly. So a woman's role is to get married, give birth to children. And take care you of know, the children. And take care of the kids and be very quiet. Don't be too loud about be your achievements. Don't be too out there. Yes. You know, and I feel like most of these things actually prevent women from breaking forth and doing as much as they're supposed to, right? And that is why I always encourage women, know who you are, know yourself. Do not let society push a narrative on you or stereotype you into a particular box, right? So, yeah, um, I pretty much know who I am and I'm confident about who I am, what I want to become. So I don't let what people say or what society thinks, what you know, say deter me. Think. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I get that. Okay, so what steps do you think Nigeria? Okay, let's come down to ourselves. Even if I know most times in the Western world, it's not really the way it is in African um, society mm -hmm. or in a Nigerian society. So let's come down to our land, our fatherland. Okay, what steps do you think can encourage, you know, Nigeria... Nigerian youth or more young women to pursue career in traditionally male-dominated fields like technology? First, we must um, train our kids because, you know, we hear these things every day that um, you have to nurture children from small, yeah. right? We must train children to know that there are no specific roles for anybody, for anybody yeah. right? If... A girl child wants to go into engineering, you know, architecture. Those are, those are, you know, normally would call that male dominated mm -hmm. roles. Mm -hmm. They should be allowed to explore those options, right? So we should encourage STEM for girls from the secondary education up to the university level. We should encourage them. The government should even put out, I always advocate for girls, for the government to put up programs for girls in STEM in secondary schools. Oh, okay. That way you're encouraging young girls to go into ordinarily or things that we would normally say are yeah, male-dominated yes. roles, right? So I think those are some of the ways. And we need more female mentors. We need yes. more women who are into, who are in these areas and can mentor the younger ones and can make them see you know, potentials in these other areas mm -hmm. that are male dominated, yes, you yes. know, help them see, um, see how progressive they can become regardless of what roles or what profession or what career path they decide to take, whether or not it is um, male or female dominated. Yes, so, yes. yeah, I think we should encourage more young women to take up, you know, um, STEM programs, we should encourage more women to go into tech. We should encourage more women to go into these areas. The world is changing. Really you changing. know, people really, really. are becoming more aware. Yes. So we should teach our children to be more aware 
to be assertive to know what they want and to go for what they want. Exactly. I really have to agree with, agree with you on that because there are stories of some some careers that men, some careers that men are predominantly in. There were stories turning up about, um, for example, gynecology. Um, you know, that has a lot to do with the female body. Yeah. And there were um, topics, there were jits all over the place and that keep reoccurring about being abused when you go for some kind of checkups. So those areas too, I have to agree with you, we have to bring up our kids, especially the females, to indulge in those areas. I'm safer when I'm with um, a female gynecologist, or maybe so to say, or not just um, when it comes to medicals, some other aspects and all of that. Like a friend of mine was telling me, he's a guy, he said he went to cut his hair and he was a female, and he was like, voila, really? He, like, there was something about him, like, he just kept his head, and the way she was just doing it, he liked it, that he does it. Uh, I'm like, eh? So you keep, you keep going by there, he said, yes, I'll go to cut my hair, like, I like that. Even the automobiles. Yeah. I have a friend, Chidima is into, and when I look at her, I'm like, how did you even do this? So you, you check systems, and know what's wrong with kind of, he's so like, yeah, and she likes it, so. I want, I want to see the women do a lot in these areas, not just being a makeup artist, being a chef. I, I know it would be good to cook, uh, but yeah. let's just do better. And I think parents as well should encourage their children, right. you know, because growing up, I remember saying to my mom that I wanted to be in the media space. I wanted to do media and theater art at the time. And my mom was like, no, 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 no. You know, it's too, it's too rough. It's too mm, deep. It's too that. Exactly. And she was like, you know, you should do law. You're good. You're, you Aww. talk very well. You know how to argue, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, all those little things. And that was how I found myself in law. I mean, I grew to love law, but it wasn't what I always wanted, really to, wanted do, to do. Right. And so I'm saying this to say that parents should know their children and not discourage them from doing what they really want to do. There are guys who want to make, who want to style hair. Hair, yes. There are guys who want to go into Discover makeup. Discover your children. Well, you know the funny thing? Society sees these people as people who are probably on the left side. Yes, that you know, true. If, exactly. If a guy wants to go into makeup, you, you look at, at him with like, two oh, eyes. Okay. Why is he not beginning to you know, like Why that? is he exactly? exactly. <laughs> so I think parents should encourage their children, regardless of the gender, to actually do what they love, to go into areas that they are most passionate about, you know, and um, pretty much push them to um, success. Right. Thank you very much, um, Mina, for detailing that. So what are some common misconceptions about gender equality that you think need to be challenged, especially among youth? First, gender, the fight for gender equality is not feminism, mm -hmm. right? Um, so people often, um, or rather, let me put it this way, People often misconstrue the concept of feminism to mean the same thing as um, the fight for gender equality. Mm -hmm. Now, feminism is equal rights. It's a common notion. It's a common conception that we all know. But there are other agendas. There's something we call radical feminism. That's people who believe that one gender or the female gender is, you know, sort of you know, should be, should be yeah. higher or one gender. Let me put it this way. One gender should be higher than, than the, the other, other gender, right? So a lot of people have misconstrued gender equality, equality to mean toxic feminism. Yes. Let me one not say feminism because feminism is broad. Yeah, yes. So toxic feminism, you know, it's like we are in a competition with, with men. men. But I like not. to tell people that our biological make as human beings, male and female, are different, right? So we have our different purposes as male and female, right? But then gender equality is saying, oh, if a man is entitled to so, so, so and so amount in the, in the workplace, I should also be entitled to that. Mm -hmm. If a man can be promoted to so, so, so and so position 
in the office, I as a woman should, should also, also be promoted. Yes. So you should not reduce my capacity based on the fact that I am a, a woman. woman. That yeah. is what gender equality is about. So give us equal rights, equal opportunities. Mm -hmm. It is not a fight for which gender is more superior yes, to what or gender do, yeah. or, you know, what gender is trying to rub shoulders. I always tell people that what my husband can do, I cannot. There are many things my husband can do, I, I cannot. I will not do, even want to do this. Right? I, it's not like I can't do those things, but sometimes your level of strength is not the same. Like I said, our biological make mm -hmm. is the our biological make is different. So this is like a swift digression from what we're talking about. But I'll just chip it in. So during the Olympics, there's a lady who um, a lady who people purposely or purposely said was a man, right? Who competed in. Um, the I think one of the boxing games or something, and after boxing, the person she boxed passed out, <laughs> and there was this argument that oh that strength she showed was it a masculine can never strength. To a woman. Yes, it cannot belong to a woman, and she was a woman. Funny enough, she just has more masculine, masculine hormones. Traits, hormones yeah. You know, so it was very funny to me, and it just reinforce or reinforce the idea that you know men in a way have their masculine energy mm -hmm. they are mm -hmm. stronger They're no strong. matter how you try to put it so there are certain things that a man would do in terms of biological make and you, yeah. cannot, and you do. cannot do a it. man cannot give birth to children yes. women can yes. that's your biological yeah. difference that's your strength exactly and your strength so people need to understand that and try to you know sort of divide um gender equality from just being a nasty feminist, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. A toxic feminist. Yes. So, yeah. Ah, that's so, so interesting because, <laughs> you know, for myself, I don't think I want to open my door, wash my car, oh. fill my fuel tanks. <laughs> I don't want to do all that. In fact, open my water can when I bite. Please help me. Yes, In please. fact, when a man is around, I am lazy. I, in fact, <laughs> I cannot do anything. I cannot do anything. I cannot. That's your so, feminine energy yeah, talking. Exactly. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to compete with a man. Yeah. I don't want to have to feel like I have equal rights with a man or I have to drag some sort of, okay, no, 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 no. I love a man to be a man. I love a man to be masculine. Yeah. But doesn't mean that you should, you know, show all of that to my femininity. No, 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 no. You shouldn't, shouldn't temper with the fact that I want to be feminine. Exactly. And still get my rights as yeah, a woman. Absolutely. Because however where you see it, we are still vulnerable to men. Mm -hmm. They have the upper power. And in fact, for me, it's a man's world, though. Let it be this world, I beg. I'm not dragging this world with you. No, 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 no. I am not. Okay, I hope you're still there. We'll take a quick break and we'll right back. We'll continue with this conversation. Just showing here, B. Mm -hmm. Welcome mm -hmm. back from that quick, 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 quick break. We still have Mina mm -hmm. with here with us. We've been having quite a very interesting conversation that I know that you are going to learn from. So, Mina, as an African Nigerian to be precise, how has our culture affected gender equality and inclusivity? So, first, it's very important to note that. Um, patriarchy and misogyny is highly ingrained in not just the nigerian culture or system the african culture yeah. right and you know because of those um patriarchal ideas women are stopped from doing a lot of things that they want to do right we have things like inheritance there are certain cultures that prevent women from you know inheriting their spouses or their father's property right we have harmful cultures that are against female mm -hmm. you know inheritance. inheritance and i think that we need to start speaking up to these cultures to these customs to these traditions you know 
we're in the 21st century. And we I like to, to drop say, a lot. yes, I like to say that the world is moving, the world is progressing. Culture, custom was made by men. Mm -hmm. And custom can also be changed. Yeah. So if there's a custom, and the Constitution says any custom that is repugnant to natural justice, mm -hmm. equity, you know, should be expunged, <laughs> you know. So I don't know why we every time we have this conversation and culture is like the top on of the top it, chart oh. because culture is one of the major promoters of gender inequality. Yes, yes. One of the major promoters of, you know, violence against violence women against even, women, yes. you know. You have issues like um, female genital mutilation, mutilation yes. FGM, that is currently still happening in a lot in, of communities, you know. That's <sighs> abuse. And a lot of cultures are still, you know, a lot Practicing of, a lot of, it. yeah, a lot of cultures are still very much into these barbaric and very unnatural practices. Tearing of skin, tribal you marks. Know. So you I know. think we need to, we need to um, keep speaking to this. We need to keep having these conversations. I am such an advocate for town hall meetings. Because I feel it's best when the community comes together, you know, key stakeholders come together and we talk about, we have progressive conversation on, oh, how can we move forward as a community? From a lot you of know. all this, you know, culture. Let's move away from talking about things that don't matter to talking about things that actually really affect matter. us as human beings, things that really matter. So, yeah, gen, um, culture has played a very significant role in this thing called gender inequality. And I think there's much that can be done. There's much that has not been done. And there's so much more to be done in terms of, you know, um, expunging or, you know, just throwing these customs away and, you Throw know, it. Throw moving it. on, Throw it being in bin. tune with our current <laughs> realities. Into the bin. Please, is yeah. there a bin here? Let's <laughs> try it. <laughs> okay, that brings me to another um, question I have. Um, how do you believe young men can be allies, allies or partners in promoting gender equality and inclusivity, but professionally, you know, to the youth? Okay, so first, I think men need to be part of the conversation. We've left men out for a very long time. Yes, I think they should be more aware. During International Women's Day, you know, we have a lot of female events, women events, and someone will just pack women in a room and, you know, say, just okay, let's talk about ourselves. Imagine, you know, in the and, social space. When and <laughs> the, the major players of gender inequality are both genders, the women and the men right so if you're having a conversation about women's equality the men should be part of that conversation yes. the men should be included so they understand they know the pain point and they understand the pain of women you know mm -hmm. and so they can see reason why they should support in your workplace as a man you should support laws you know or policies that are favorable to the women mm -hmm. Women are the female gender is a marginalized gender. It is it is it is um it is not a new thing. We all At know all. that we are a marginalized we, we, group. We are so aware. You know? And so the men should be aware of the plights of women and try to lend their voices to the fight against gender inequality. The fight for inclusion mm -hmm. men should be a part of that conversation as a man in the workplace are you speaking up against policies that don't favor the mm -hmm. other gender yes. you know when you get paid higher salary than your don't female you counterparts ego, you know, you know do ego. you speak up do you go to the hr or do you go to meet the hr and say you know why can something so? be done about this you mm -hmm. know i mean why is not most times the, same? the women even work harder but because right. you're a woman you know, you don't get certain benefits. So I think that the men have to be part of the conversation. The men must, must I think it should lend start their with the voice. Men. Yes, it, it should, should start, start with, with the them. Yes. And, you know, I always say it goes back to the foundation, right? Yeah. From childhood, from infanthood, boys are thought that they have leverage over female children. 
That's true. So a boy can be outside playing ball while Does the girl whatever child, wants. you is know, the while the girl child is in the kitchen doing and, everything. You know, a lot of times female children get to take so much responsibility on their shoulders mm -hmm. from small because you're, you're you're trying to take care of your especially first first daughters, first daughters. First daughters. you're trying to take care of your brothers you're trying to do some other things you know house chores do this do that and it's a lot at the That's end of the day to, you know <sighs> you know so i think men you know boy children we should have this conversation take With this conversation child. i keep saying to it. the schools as well so boy children know that you know you, you and your sister, you and your female counterparts are on the same level, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's no, superiority. there's no superiority. No gender is higher than the other okay. gender. So I think that conversation needs to be had. You know, we must bring the children in. We must train them, train a child in a way it should go, oh, yes, right? Yes. And when he's old, he will not, will depart, not depart from it. it. So I think it's important that we inculcate, you know, these values of... Um, uh, treating people equally mm -hmm. in the boy child, in the girl child as well, as right, well, from yes. when they are small. Because girl children as well, because we are female, because we are soft, most times we want to, you know, want to overdo, mm -hmm. you know, we want to overdo. So I think there has to be that balance, you know, both genders must learn mutual respect for each other, for each other regardless of who you are, who you regardless are. Yes. of, you know, what you look like. So, right. yeah. yeah, and kudos to, you know, some mothers or parents who have tried to incorporate and inculcate good attitude in some males. There are some men I meet, I'm like, ah, oh, your mother did a good job. Yeah. Um, um, I just feel this thing, I'm just proud, like, oh, whoever this guy's mother is or this man's mother is, you really tried. You did a good job. And I feel mothers should do more. This particular generation, tutor your kids, the boy and the female which of boy girl man woman just teach them that look you are not competing with the other gender exactly you are to help each other yeah that's what it is nothing more nothing less so finally let's um wrap this up i um, in your opinion as a tech professional um how can tech innovation be used to promote gender equality and inclusivity among the younger generation like we were talking about Okay, so first, I think our systems need to um, sort of be more conscious about gender equality, you know. Um, I was saying something recently at an event where I spoke at, you know, that AI, a lot of, you know, artificial intelligence, um, power tools have not yet been able to pretty much um, understand or would I say um, incorporate gender inclusivity in some of their policies and workings, mm -hmm. right? The way they work, yes. right? So I think we need, we need to um, get most organizations that are tech powered or, you know, to sort of, um, sort of drive uh, policies within their organizations, within their systems that promote gender equality, diversity, and inclusion. Oh, thank you very much. That was so wonderful. That was enlightening, insightful, having this conversation with you. And I love the way you took it bit by bit. I love the way you spoke about you so gracefully. What's that new thing that you use? I'm very demure. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you spoke about it and indeed it has helped calm some of course over the years I've always pondered about this what's this struggle with male female every time looking like the male have upper hands they can do anything to a woman mm -hmm. even in a place for example you go to buy PMS will you move that robot you just just yeah. there's a lot of we need to take it easy to calm down calm be demure <laughs> men be demure <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much for, you know, tuning into this a very interesting episode. Like, you know, Youth Hub always bring you interesting and educating episodes bit by bit every day. So quickly before we go, we have to play a game, Mina. Hmm. So tell us two truths and a lie. And two. I have to guess which is the truth and which is the lie. Oh, my God. <laughs> two truths and a lie. Okay. 
I studied law. Okay. I speak French. Mm -hmm. I am from Cross River State. Ah! <laughs> okay, let me think. I am a lawyer. I speak French. And I'm from Cross River. I, I think... know you know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't speak don't, French. Don't Come speak. <laughs> Sava BMSC, did I not just speak French? Ah, no, but you're right. Ah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much. And we've come to the end of our interesting episode on Youth Hub. Please make sure to stick with me next week, Thursday, where I bring you something more spicy. For now, have a nice day. <laughs>